welcome back. It's Megan for season three. I'm so excited. I have Alexi here today. Welcome back, Alexi. Hi. <laughs> and today we're covering reviews and review marketing. Um, and they're so important. I know so when important. I'm searching for a business to do business with and I have to choose, I know we think of restaurants, right? Like yeah. if they don't have five stars, the, you're like running scared. I'm <laughs> you're a like big scrolling past. Of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it matters for so many other businesses besides restaurants. Yeah. Um, so why do potential customers care about reviews? Yeah. So I think there are um, many reasons. Um, I just, I know for me, like anything I'm doing, like I'm going to get my nails done or if I like want a new hair person, like that's where I will go first. I will go look at reviews. And if you don't have a high star rating, or even if you don't have a lot of reviews, I'll probably just skip you. Or recent reviews. I know sometimes yes. I've looked at businesses and I'm like, oh, wow, that's great. And I'm like, oh, two years ago. Is that how you, like, no, no one said anything since. That makes me a little wary too. Yeah. So um, it's super important to me. Um, so yeah, it's big for customers. Well, I think even touching on that too, like the reason it's big for customers is, as you mentioned, like as you read them, the next step is to take action, like to book an appointment or give yep. them a call or click through to their website. So yep. these reviews have the power to influence that click through rate. Yep. Right? Yep. So um, if you don't have a lot of reviews and you don't have good reviews, um, you're not even going to get any clicks. And um, those clicks will not only help you get new customers, customers, but help you show up in the search results. Um, I know also besides those um, businesses you just mentioned, home services, they're huge for home services. Yeah. Cause you don't, if you're getting, inviting someone into your home, you want to trust that other customers have trusted them as well. Yeah. There's a stranger that's going to yeah. show up sometime between noon and two and they're going to be there. Like, uh, and a lot of times home service jobs, like if you think of a roofing contractor, they're huge jobs. Yes. And so you want to see really positive, recent uh, relevant reviews. Yeah, so definitely. So I feel like even for home services, it might be more important than like a restaurant or any of the other type of businesses that I've talked about. So. Yeah, definitely. And so more than customers care about reviews, of course we care about reviews. Um, but what, tell me about Google and why does Google care about reviews? Yeah. So I think there are a lot of reasons Google cares about reviews, but I think the biggest thing is Google wants to trust your business just as much as the customer wants to trust your business. So Google doesn't want to give potential customers businesses that don't have a lot of ratings and don't have or don't have a high star rating and don't have a lot of reviews and don't have good reviews. Trust is huge with Google and reviews are a big thing for that. Right. They don't want to point searchers in the wrong direction. They don't want to yeah. make them unhappy because why would they keep coming back to Google if it's giving them bad suggestions. Yep, definitely. Um, so yeah, it's a huge ranking factor. And I think there are a lot of things that go into that ranking factor. So yeah, break it down. Yeah. So quantity of reviews. So like we said, you want to get a lot of reviews. Obviously, that's the first thing I look at. If you have two reviews, I'm probably not going to look at your business. Um, high star rating. Um, probably at least above a four star. I think that's super yeah, important. I think I feel like if it's three and a half stars even, it's like looking looking like it's three stars. Yeah. And that makes me cringe a little bit because probably someone in their industry or nearby has four stars or has five stars. And yeah. like we said, like with restaurants, for example, it's so competitive. If you have a four star rating, you might not even be selected. Yeah. Um, I feel like with restaurants, they probably get the most amount of reviews. So if you have a three star rating, average rating, you're probably getting a lot of negative reviews. Yeah. And I would caution businesses from getting too hung up. I agree with you on that for yeah. restaurants. Um, caution businesses from getting too hung up on negative, getting a negative review. Negative review yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've seen some that are really bad for sure. It kind of um, just is what it is. It is. And it's someone's experience. So I know we've had business owners call us and say, hey, can you get rid of this? They actually didn't do business with me. Yeah. Um, well, if they called your business and your receptionist was rude, that's still that's still an experience with your business. Yeah. Um, and so they have, like they're within guidelines to be able to leave a review about their experience. So um, I would just say like how we can help combat negative reviews is by getting new, frequent, relevant reviews to help kind of push down that negative yeah. review from being like the most recent review that that someone would see. Definitely. And I also think like negative reviews, they're bad, but they could help your business. They can help you learn what you're doing wrong and how you can improve that in the future. Oh, absolutely. There's so much context and so much. Um, it's, it's it's 
an in, it's insight into your customer's experience. So you yeah. can take that and yeah, you're right. Leverage it and, and, um, adapt your business, Definitely. you know, and sometimes we've seen like, um, customers, uh, giving positive and negative feedback in a review. They're like, Hey, I love this, but the wait was yeah. too long. Um, so even if it's a high star rating, it's, it's super, um, important to read into the context of what the actual customer saying. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry. I know we were talking about ranking. So Google's looking at quantity of the reviews, the rating. Yep. Um, diversity of reviews. So obviously Google is huge, but you don't just want reviews on Google. Um, Facebook, Yelp, Yelp is huge for restaurants, um, all kinds of businesses. So yeah, and actually in the Google My Business listing, they've been pulling in yep. um, like a little link, if you've seen it before, um, to Facebook reviews, to Yelp reviews, to Open Table reviews. Yeah. I mean, they're, they have other partners and or their crawlers are pulling them over and they'll display your star rating there too. Yeah, so I was going to say, seen, I believe it says shows your rating. It'll be like Facebook 2.5 yeah. and you have like a five star on Google. Yeah, so <laughs> you don't want to neglect those at all. Absolutely not. Um, how... Uh, what other factors actually before we dive into that? Yeah, so I think you kind of touched on this a little bit, but your recency of your reviews. So you don't want 10 reviews that are from a year ago. Um, and Google kind of uh, takes that, I feel like, into account too. It'll be like, hey, you just got 10 new reviews and you haven't done anything for two years. Um, yeah. Because And then it won't, it, it may like filter out some of those reviews. It'll, it'll feel like some things... Um, not right with yep. this. It'll feel spammy to Google. Um, so we caution um, businesses against doing like giveaway. Well, one, you're not yeah. supposed to do a giveaway yes. at all anyways. Yes. Um, but from doing like campaigns uh, where you're like, okay, okay, servers ask five people today. And then all of a sudden there's this huge influx yep. of reviews. That looks sketch. <laughs> it does. It looks so yeah. sketchy to Google. They're like, hey, you didn't have any reviews and now you have 50. Uh, like why and then it starts removing them and so unfortunately one you're not it's against guidelines to do like a giveaway or to pay people for their review um yelp will absolutely yeah i was gonna say yelp like hides reviews yep um and i think that's one of the reasons um if they think it's like a fake profile or not someone that has left reviews before sometimes they think it's weird um yeah. If it's their first review, sometimes it can seem too fishy to, yeah, which to is Google and Yelp. unfortunate, but... That's what happens. And as people start using Google more um, to for reviews, uh, I know like once I started using, reading more reviews, I'm like, oh, I'll do my, sh- do my part and leave yeah. reviews, um, especially when you have a great experience. Yep. Um, and I suppose on the other end of the spectrum, especially when you have a really bad experience yes. as well, you want to like <laughs> warn people. Um, I feel like that's more, I feel like I need to leave more positive reviews. Cause like, I feel like your first instinct is to like leave a negative review if you're upset. It's really bad. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and so I guess business, bus- business owners, Um, please understand that that's probably what your customers are doing. You're going to get the best um, of the best and you're probably going to get the worst of the worst. You're not going to get a lot of in between. (laughs) (laughs) The best review strategy is to run a um, business that you would want to do business with. So people have this great experience and so that you're learning and growing and and it's natural for customers to want to go and leave a great review. Um, Sorry, I had one more thing with like the recency with reviews. I think um, if Google's seeing that recently people have been leaving reviews, they're like, oh, people are interacting with your listing. And so Absolutely. they're going to want to show that listing more. Yeah. They're going to say, hey, like this is a happening place. This is like a great place that uh, people keep having great experiences yeah. here. Let's show it in the results. Definitely. Absolutely. And um, any other factors? Yeah. So I think this is something that has become more prominent recently and it's gone up in the ranking factors, but like keywords in reviews. Oh, yeah. So definitely when you search, um, say, for dentist or yep. um, or if you're like tooth extraction. Yep. It's gonna <laughs> look, specifically, you're Very looking specific. for a dentist, but you're looking to. Yeah. Um, if you type that in a, a keyword and that's in a review, it's going to pull up that review yep. and, and bold it so that you can see like, hey, these reviews might be relevant to exactly what you're searching for. So the keywords in the reviews are playing into the ranking algorithm, but they're also really directly influencing um, that click-through rate or that interaction, that engagement with the listing because Google's pulling out the reviews that that have those keywords 
um, or those keyword strings in the review content. Yeah, definitely. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Google says like this business mentions and then the mm-hmm. keyword and that can come from reviews sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's super important. Okay. So getting reviews is half the battle. What do we do when we get them? Um, well, you need to respond to all of them, all positive and negative. Yes, you heard that right. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I've said this so many times, but like sometimes businesses think you should just respond. Well, sometimes they don't respond to any of them. I know that seems horrible. It's like, are you open? <laughs> yeah. Um, but a lot of times they just respond to the negative ones. And I feel like you need to just say thank you to the ones that have like left you a positive review. Mm-hmm. Even if there's, even if it's just a five-star rating. Yes. Um, yep. I think sometimes business owners struggle. They're like, well, what am I supposed to say? Same. So like, yeah. give us a few examples. What are um, some things you can say to positive and negative reviews? Yeah. Um, so for a positive review, um, you can just say, Hey, thank you for leaving a review. Um, we hope you come back soon. Like it can be as simple as that. Mm-hmm. Or thanks for sharing your experience. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you for sharing your feedback. Just anything like that. Um, I think with a negative, it's important to recognize the issue the customer had and don't blame them or get defensive or anything like that. Try to argue your point on a public forum. Yeah, basically like take responsibility, even if maybe you don't think you did anything wrong. And if you don't think you did something wrong, um, acknowledge what the customer said and then take it offline. Ask them if they want an opportunity to take it offline. Absolutely. So. Um, and I think that's what's super important for others. Besides, and in case you don't know, when you reply to reviews, the reviewer gets that response within their account, yep. as well as it's posted publicly for yeah. the business um, under the review. Yep. So it's not only ex- important to acknowledge that um, less favorable, poor experience uh, and maybe correct it, maybe turn it into a positive experience for that person. Maybe they go back and leave you a positive review. I've read edited reviews where they're like, this was yep. terrible, but the owner contacted me and, and made it right. Yeah. So that could happen. Or they if, may just come, they may come back again if they're absolutely. like, okay, maybe this is just a mistake, we'll try it again. a one-time thing. Yeah. But even if they don't, as a um, searcher, I'm still reading those reviews. And I'm like, oh, wow, that business owner reached out. They tried to fix it. Yeah. Um, and believe me, as a searcher too, we know the crazies when they happen. We're like, oh, that person, <laughs> <laughs> um, that review sounds crazy. Yeah. Reading, and you keep reading the next. So you're taking in all cumulatively. And that's like Google's trying to show you a variety Yeah. And I don't know, maybe it's because I'm in it all the time, but I definitely notice when business owners are responding to reviews and I think that's super cool. So yeah, definitely do that. Do your part business owners, your, your customers are sharing feedback with you. So for sure. Okay. So this sounds like a huge undertaking for businesses. I mean, you can do it manually, right? Like you can do it through the Google platform. You can can go into dashboard and then you got to log into Facebook and then you got to log into Yelp and then you got to log into open table. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, tell me about a few tools that, um, business owners can use and how do they work? What do they help with? Yeah. So there are a few, there's Yext, um, Podium, um, and then BirdEye, all great. Um, we use BirdEye and it's a really great way to, Respond to all your reviews within one dashboard. Um, you don't have to go to each plot or to GMB, to Facebook, to Yelp to respond. Um, you can do it all at once in the same dashboard. Um, yeah, and it's really helpful. Yeah, I know we've used owners. over the years. We've used different tools. We've yes. tried different tools. Um, so all great. Those are yeah. Those are just a few of like some of the core staple ones. But there's other ones out there that are still great. And it's just more about finding what the need is for your business. Like if you're a restaurant, you're getting a high volume of reviews and you have to be able to handle that high volume. Maybe you need like multiple users on different days, like responding to reviews versus a contractor who maybe has like their technicians respond to their reviews or their districts or whatever respond to reviews. Um, Or a small business owner that's like a retailer. They're like, hey, I I can do this. I just need one place and they only need one login. and, And there's a tool for that too. So yeah. The so, great thing about the platforms are they bring them all into one place yeah, and you don't have to awesome. go and log in like to all these separate accounts. Yep. So um, I definitely think if you're looking to respond to reviews, you should def- definitely take advantage of a review platform to do that. Yeah. And so not only aggregating it. So the next step, too, is like once they got a handle on that, they some of these tools have a send um, or SMS feature where you can either email yeah. or like email your customers, like say you had a CRM or you have a point of sale that yep. you're collecting their email, you can drop it or upload it into these platforms and say like, hey, okay, two days after they've you know, checked out or two days after their haircut, yep. let's email them and say, how was your service? I know I got my haircut. 
We yes. get our hair cut at the same, same place. Person. <laughs> <laughs> and they email or they text me this morning um, and they were like, how was your experience? Do you want to leave a review? And oh, so awesome. I got it from a text. Yeah. Um, so I know yeah. some of these platforms, I mean, I know it's not someone there just like texting me. Yeah. It's obviously no. a tool. Yeah. Um, so it's great that um, you can use these tools that you may already have um, like the pipeline to yep. like your CRM or your POS or um, and you can send those reviews or send those emails to ask for a review or ask about their experience or those text messages. It yeah. makes it super easy. Yep. So I, I think if you're struggling to get reviews, maybe consider this as an option. Um, I guess the last thing we like about these tools too is reporting because yeah. then it's, since it's all in one dashboard, you can see how many emails were sent, how many were opened, how many new reviews did we get? Um, what's the change from month to month? Like, Hey, last month was a really negative month. Oh, it's because that location just opened. And, you know, um, so we can see the sentiment yeah, by, by location sentiment, too. Yeah. We're like, Hey, that location's struggling. And they keep mentioning manager Sherry, you know, with negative sentiment. So yeah. maybe we need to have some training with her or something. Yeah. You can see sentiment by location, by keyword, by, um, time, um, like window. Yeah. So it's really great for reporting purposes as well. Yeah. Like I said, it's not always bad to get a negative review and that would be a great way to track, um, how your business is doing for certain categories. So. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Um, well, thanks for sharing all of this, um, helpful information about why yeah. reviews are important and, um, how business owners can get started because really it's something that you can't ignore. Not at all. I think one of the other things that we would want to make sure to touch on is this is one of the most easy ways to influence your ranking mm -hmm. um, because you already probably have um, tackled your site. You probably already claimed your GMB listing and optimized it. So um, a lot of other factors you can't do anything about. You're not going to relocate your business like proximity. Yeah. Um, we've talked about in previous episodes. This is something you can control. This is something you can control. Yeah. If you have a bad rating or no reviews, like get out there and yeah. start getting those reviews and take control and respond to them. Yeah. Hustle. Go get them. Because <laughs> Google's going to say like, that's hard to fake. Yeah. And because of their filters getting more stringent, like to get rid of spammy reviews and things, yeah. um, it's harder to fake. So Google feels that it's more relevant and heavily weighted in the algorithm. Yeah. And that's probably why it's gone up in the ranking factors as of recent so yeah yeah absolutely super important awesome well thanks for joining us alexi um it's always a pleasure having you here um make sure you like rate and subscribe to our podcast we drop episodes twice a month um so subscribe and get our latest episode every other wednesday i've heard that is a part of the heard at media network for more information, follow Herd At on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or Instagram, or visit HerdAtMarketing.com. A Herd At Media Production.